Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Craig uh, Mullins. Um, he's a pretty well-known artist, and I actually do have a collection of his work. Um, I have a folder of his best, or what I think is his best um, pieces, and more often than not, they're actually more like sketches to me, or his sketches are what really jump out to me, just because it has way more energy and um, I do like the way he paints, it's a bit impressionistic, I like seeing the brush strokes, um, and I think it does have a solid background in traditional painting, and I think that's why sometimes when you check out his work, it has a bit of that classic, not classical, but um, kind of a mix between watercolor and oils, like it has that kind of natural touch. Um, for example, for this piece, uh, it's one of his sketches here. I like seeing the chaos, right? And it doesn't have to be... I'm always fascinated how artworks don't usually have to be like super rendered to kind of make an impact. And um, I think that's the appeal of impressionistic types of artwork. It just looks more direct and powerful. <laughs> Um, and it's great for concept art because you can like come up with a lot of concepts uh, without having to go into detail as much. And you're kind of just focusing on the big picture more often than not, right? You don't have to like go into detail and uh, render things out. You're mainly thinking about the composition and shit. Now for this one, he did, it's a bit more refined, I guess. I'm not sure. I'm, I do think it does photo bash sometimes. Maybe to just start out his painting, um, but he doesn't have to because I do recommend you check out his website, goodbrush.com. I will link all of his interviews and shit in the description below. Um, but I do recommend you check out his sketches tab because he has like a concept art tab and a sketches tab and other like tabs in his portfolio website thing. Um, I do recommend you go for his sketches just because you can see his more... I feel like that series of work, that collection of work is way more flamboyant and nice to look at, right? This one actually feels like a, a cover. I mean, it's not super detailed, but it's a bit more full, I guess. Oh, this is a xenomorph. Uh, I mean, look at that. You can see some variety here in terms of hues, some blues, some greens, right? It's not just a black um, thing. Because um, the moment you put black in an environment, the colors of that environment will show up in some way in the in the black, right? So the xenomorph, the alien xenomorph, is obviously kind of blackish. So yeah, but because it's in a certain environment, you will see some extra colors, right? And it does add a bit more life. And look at how it's not even super refined, right? You can see he does like to use the round brush, a simple round brush, often. Um, now this one, maybe he did use some 3D? Not sure, maybe not. But the edges are way more clear. He probably did layer manage uh, the Photoshop file a bit. Um, and I believe he used to paint in the beginning, like, uh, days of digital art. He used to paint with a, a mouse just because tablets weren't a thing. Um, I do recommend you watch the interview with um, Bobby Chu. Bobby Chu um, interviewed Craig Mullins before and I think they did talk about his um, career in the beginning, right? Um, wow, right? It looks so varied, it looks kind of sketchy, right? Not super rendered, it's not exactly an illustration, but it's enough to kind of tell a story, make an impact, and it's pretty good with the lighting as well. Very, very dramatic. Um, ooh, fatty. <laughs> Damn! Um, Wow. Lots of texture in his work. And again, that awesome round brush. I think um, Ahmed al Duri is also a fan of this guy. Um, and I think it, Craig Mullins did influence uh, Ahmed. Um, but yeah, look at the, uh, the brush strokes, right? Great shadow here. Fat over fat. Um, look at how the hand is not even fully detailed. It's really just a suggestion and you can just see the silhouette but the actual kind of knuckles and the the segments of the fingers are not really that defined at all right even the garment right here it's so suggested um but it's awesome right 
and lots of greens and reds. It's so varied in terms of hues. Oh, you can see some greens here and some reds on the other side. So there's there's this nice kind of complementary thing um, going on, right? Kind of an epic scene. This one's more of a close-up, right? And look at the environment, it's not even that detailed. Obviously the sky is the, the main focus. It almost looks like a keyframe for a film, for a game. Right? Oh, look at this, uh... It's more of a concept sketch, right? I do want to get better at this sort of thing. Um, I'm actually still trying to figure out what my focus is when it comes to art, so... Uh, but just seeing stuff like this, um, how it's not even that fully detailed. It's, it's not a full illustration, but it tells a story. The lighting is awesome. Um, and it makes you kind of think about what the piece is about, right? And um, I think it's also nice to see his brush efficiency. He doesn't paint like, say, uh, John Park. Very kind of opaque, right? John Park is kind of opaque, similar to like Direct Zabrocki. Um, big brush strokes. Um, uh, I would put Craig Mullins along with Victor Klux, Victor Clue, um, and John Waller and Liberto. Um, but John Waller and Liberto actually is. Yeah. <laughs> right? Look at the bike, it's not super detailed. Uh, even the face is super simplified, but it's uh, it's intriguing, right? Even the highlights here and this kind of rim, awesome. Hmm. I actually like his sci-fi types of artwork. Wow, look at the the variation, right? Lots of brush variety there. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe. Shit. Who's the guy? I see a bit of John McCoy, perhaps. He's another concept artist. Um, at least, because uh, John McCoy does like 3D, I think, as well. Like he paints over a 3D base. But he does have like a few like painted 2D pieces, like purely 2D stuff. And some of Craig Mullen's work reminds me of John McCoy as well. So, yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at that butt, right? Oh. And look at how here it's just a basic silhouette, right? And I love the lighting, right? The scene. It kind of feels right. Like nothing is out of place. Um, lots of variety here. There's some greens, some reds. Nice complimentary thing going on there. Um, and it's actually pretty varied in terms of the frames of his pieces. It's not all like longitudinal. Sometimes we'll do like a portrait. Sometimes we'll do like a, a one by one kind of um, frame shot. And how you frame your painting will actually, it does help to add to the story, I guess. Um, for me, I'm, a, I'm actually not super comfortable. Um, like, I always feel like I have to post a certain way. <laughs> or I have to post, like, a an image with a certain size. You know, like, it should be, like, 16 by 9 or something. And I kind of need to uh, not be so married to a certain kind of template, right? Awesome scene. Very, very strong dramatic lighting. Um, look at how simple that is. You can see a lot of the uh, the round brush use, the basic round brush. Um, and again, I think the lighting is um, what really what really kind of um, brings his work to life. Um, and of course, his brush variety helps. Uh, for this piece, I think it's hard to see other brushes aside from the, the round brush. So I think what really helps him is his brush efficiency, right? Look at that. Very, very impressionistic. Um, right? Uh, even the way he did the, these like eagles or gar gargoyles and things. Um, how the details in the wall or door are kind of suggested. Um, maybe he did use some kind of photo texture here. Right? To help. Not everything has to be painted. And, uh, but it's actually hard to tell whether something is, uh, painted or not, so... He knows how to photo bash, at least. But his work is not... Is more often than not, not refined. 
Like it's a bit uh, you can see more of the brush strokes, which I do like. So I wouldn't put him in the category of like a full on illustrator. Cause they usually can bring like sketches like these a different kind of level. Um like for marketing and stuff like that. Or for cover art, right? They're very, very um patient, right? Uh, so if you're not very patient, maybe I rec I recommend to check out the sketches tab in Craig Mullen's um, website, goodbrush.com, I believe. I'll just link it again in the description below. Look at how he did the clouds, right? He just painted it. Now some would probably put the background in its own layer and be more John Park-ish about it, right? But for Craig, he's just he just paints over it. Um, again, similar to like John Wall and Liberto. Um, Damn, um, I think this is some kind of mech here, and maybe she's a pilot, perhaps? I love the reflected lighting in the bottom of the face, right? Um, multiple light sources, I'm not sure how he achieved this, but again, look at the impressionism in, in this painting, it's so... I mean, you can essentially create all sorts of, like, um, ideas with this kind of approach, right? And it looks good. Um, damn. Right? You can even see some of his line sketches here. Very, very confident. Um, very ballsy. Oh, maybe some photo texture here. As a base, perhaps. And then he just painted over it again. Uh, whoa. Yeah, he probably did have like a, a photo in the beginning. And then just painted over it. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell, you know? It's it's not like matte painting level of photo bashing, it's um, concept level of photo bashing. Where it's really more about the idea, instead of it being like an actual part of the film, like a background scene or something. Um, look at that lighting here, damn, like this side is in shadow, very sharp edge here. Holy shit. Even the crowd here is just like a bunch of silhouettes, because obviously the main thing is this vehicle here. And, um, oh, the pilot is here, right? Nice babe. You can even tell it's a chick just because of the silhouette. Very curvy. Oh, la la. Um, but look at the design, the sci-fi design of this ship. Or this kind of racing vehicle, I think. A um, nice soft edge here. Whoa. Could be from the clouds, perhaps? Maybe there's some kind of bridge on top. To kind of, uh, I don't know where it kind of starts, where the vehicles kind of start the race and shit. Um, a bit of round brush here, you can see the, the use of the round brush. And look at how it's super confident, right? Um, very, very impressive. And again, it's more of a sketch. And this one does have a bit more detail. Especially when it comes to the face. Um, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, this one's a bit more... Um, I think he probably did use like the smudge tool or... Uh, I think the smudge tool. To kind of drag some of the, the colors around. Uh, and you can see the, the, the persons, the persons, the people are here, right? You can see the shadow here. Um, so this thing is actually meant to be viewed from afar, right? Nice way to kind of save time. So he did start, I'm guessing he did start up with a photo. And then dragged some paint around to kind of get the, the look that he wants. But that's my guess. Um, and of, of course, lots of like paint overs, you can tell. And I do think he did use the uh, the smudge tool to drag paint around. Um, and it's easier, it's actually kind of faster to use the smudge tool to drag paint because the mixture brush does have, it will make it look more artsy and it's great for like soft stuff. But uh, if you want to be quick about it and kind of aggressive, I would recommend using the uh, the smudge tool and putting the strength close to 100, right? Ah, look at the lighting here. Damn. And it leads you to this uh, person here. I think this is a uh, part of Noah's. Like the film? Nova? Noah something? Noah's Ark? Fuck. No idea. Oh shit. I mean, look at that. Very, very heavy on the silhouette. It's really more about the mood. Some kind of dark warrior. Demon Knight. Oh, some kind of gladiator chick. Um, a goddess. Perhaps? 
so she probably killed someone displeased with his um actions maybe um, but look at the pose look at the reflected lighting right she's actually in shadow but this part of the uh the platform is in light so you can see that kind of bouncing off of her especially in the in the bottom parts of her body right very very interesting um shot right and again it's not afraid to show off the brush strokes even the blood is just like a bunch of scribbles <laughs> scribbles or scribbles fuck oh here a bit more photo bashing but even the characters are, like painted right it helps to fill out the scene the photos but again he takes control and he's not um he's not super dependent on the photos they just help i guess right to just add, to just add a bit more um, like grit right to fill in some of the the details um very very interesting shot here um dystopian feature perhaps uh, this one does have like a lot of hues, but again, there's always that complimentary thing. You've got some greens here and some reds, right? And his work does look very natural, even though it's obviously done um, in Photoshop. Um, just because of his color use and the way he paints, it doesn't look um, like tight. It feels loose and just artsy. Because um, if you go to art station, sometimes it looks so... I mean, it's great. You know, I like seeing the variation of like approaches, but uh, sometimes it does get too tight. And uh, but maybe that's just me because I do have that impressionistic kind of lean. Um, so whatever. Maybe he did use some 3D as a base, and then just painted over it. Cause every night I lie in bed. Um. Oh, look at this environment. Reminds me of Violet Evergarden, um, the anime. I actually haven't watched the the last part where she actually meets her guy again. Um, Cause I, yeah, but I do want to watch it just because, you know, yeah. Look at that round brush, very, very confident again. He, he just keeps going back to the same brush. Um, you can see some reds, some purples for the shadow. Whoa! Right? Very, very interesting shot. And look at how uh, you can see a bit of sky here. Um, wet sand, the wave. It's very kind of spaced out and it actually helps with the, the composition, right? And again, not super detailed. Everything is suggested. Big picture kind of approach. Um, here you can actually see more smaller brush strokes, almost like a pencil-like stroke. Um, think, what's his name? I forgot his name. Linebacker, right? So this this one is more of a fashion thing, I guess. Uh, oh, look at the mood. And it looks pretty epic. Damn. Maybe some 3D, I'm guessing? Not sure. Look at the background, look at those clouds. It looks so atmospheric. Very cinematic. Reminds me of, it gives me the feels of Lord of the Rings. Right? That epic kind of shot. Um, it almost feels like watercolor in a way. Like it has that washy kind of feel, right? Oh no, is this Cleopatra? Some kind of Egyptian goddess? Slave, perhaps? Lots of brush strokes. Oh, this could be like from the... Um, maybe it's not necessarily part of the floor. It could be like part of the... Or maybe it is part of the floor. I was guessing it's some kind of shadow because... Maybe there's some kind of um, roof with some spacing on it atop, but you can't really see the shadows on her, so it's actually part of the ground. Um, but damn, love the reflected light. And look at how she's not even fully rendered, right? Not very smooth, not not smooth in any way. It's almost like um, he went for a gouache-like approach, where it's heavy on the shapes, but she does feel so vulnerable, feminine, right? Oh, I can see some reds and some greens. Again, the complimentary thing going on. They're very, very interesting. Right? And very good storytelling. I love the shot. It's a, it's a very cinematic kind of shot. Um, damn. She cute. AF. Oh, Look at that back though. Damn! This could be like part of a ball. Again, look at that round brush. Ugh, oh, confidence. 
Again, guess what? Green versus red. Awesome. It's so artistic, right? You can see a lot of like scribbly types of strokes here. Um, lots of storytelling, I guess. And again, it, it works with the the one by one kind of shot, right? Um, oh, look at that! Sci-fi, damn, or cyberpunk, steampunk. Again, it's not fully rendered, but obviously he did spend more time with this character. There's, there's a bit more detail. Maybe he did use some photos. I'm guessing. Maybe not. Maybe in this part a bit. Um, to kind of fill in some of the details, but he does take charge, I guess, especially in terms of the composition. Like, you can't copy that. You have to kind of figure out the right one to kind of tell the right story, you know, or the story that you want to be, um, that you want to communicate and show off, right? Ugh. Very smoky, kind of polluted kind of city, right? Great, 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 uh, mood painting, right? <clears throat> Um, awesome. Very typical kind of a concept art shot. More about the design and feel of the environment. Um, nice elf. I believe she's trying to fix up someone, or maybe she just killed this guy or something. Hard to say, but uh, love the contrast here. A light area here in the in the background and then you can see these, these two like dark figures kind of enveloping that sliver of light um it really kind of pulls you in and even her arm has that nice kind of highlight right um and again look at the brush strokes here oh it's so t -t -t -t, right a bit of rake brush use here like a reiki brush um but again he keeps going back to that round that simple round brush um Oof, nice. Oh, look at how he illustrated the smoke. Right? And the shadow here, it's kind of purple, right? Damn, it really, he, he was able to show movement without having to use like, um, like a motion blur filter in Photoshop. He just kind of suggested it through brush strokes. So that's very, very impressive. And again, look at the round brush here, right? Look at the brush strokes. Very, very confident. Smaller brush strokes here, right? Ah. Now this one's more, more, um, it's more cooler, lots of blues and purples. Mainly red. Um, this one feels like softer, I guess. Maybe he did use more of the mixer brush, perhaps. Um, I don't see a lot of like sharp round brush use. Um, ah, oh, look at this. Great environment shot. Or mood shot. I mean, it, it is an environment shot. It's about the environment and scene, right? But again, he, does, he didn't have to like detail everything. And I think it helps if you paint small. Or you don't necessarily have to paint small, just don't zoom in. Um, but obviously, if you have like a smaller canvas size, you'll have no choice but to um, see it from afar. Because the moment you zoom in, it just gets so pixelated. So yeah, it's great. Um, it's, it's a nice three-point perspective. You're seeing it in a skewed kind of way. Um, it really makes the environment feel bigger, right? Oh, but yeah, this is the Noah's Ark kind of film. Um, awesome. Oof, look at that. Christ almighty. Nice beard. Damn, it's actually kind of hard to, I mean, it's easy to do like, I feel like it's easier to do stuff like this, where the environment is actually kind of rough, um, but if you have to like do a city like this, where it's, um, where you have cleaner edges, you have to be a bit more, um, uh, like there's less room for error, I believe, and it's hard to be impressionistic, for this piece it's not even that impressionistic, right, and I'm guessing he did use some photos here, some basic photo bashing, um, but yeah, I love the feel of this city, right? Of this kind of nightlife. It's, it's a bit quiet, not too busy. Um, you can tell by the amount of cars here. It's not that heavy. Low traffic. Um, late night, early morning, perhaps. Um, Ghostbuster? <laughs> I'm just guessing here. Kind of, it's a night scene. 
a moonlit scene. Ah, damn, you flag. Oh, whoa. Again, lots of brown brush use here. Um, I love how he did the lighting in this kind of forearm, right? Looks like a classical kind of painting. Did he paint this? Maybe. Now this this one actually does look like a classical painting, just because of the um. Perhaps it's a color palette, or something. Um, War of the Worlds, perhaps. I'm guessing. I think he did use like a photo in the beginning. You can see the pixelation of the photo or texture, and then he simply painted over it, right? Um. Ooh, nice shot from the floor. Look at how he did this brush stroke here. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Right? Confident. Fuck. Oh Jesus. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. <laughs> so you can see the donkey here. Um. I don't see a lot of palms because I know they had to like put palms, like palm leaves in the floor, right? Nice scene. Nice face. I believe this was um, from the um, the film um, with Will Ferrell. Uh, I love the film. It's actually pretty funny. Um, <laughs> it's a bit perverted, but uh, it's pretty cute. Not, well, not cute, but uh, it was a fun film. I can't remember the actual name, but uh, it had like a T-Rex, so that's always a good thing, right? Um, and this one is a bit more refined. Obviously, there were photos used here, but it looks more refined to me. Um... Reminds me of the work. I, I, I hope I'm getting the name right. Timothy Rodriguez. Let me see his work. Timothy Rodriguez. I think I'm saying it right. Art. I'm just seeing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It does remind me of the work of Timothy Rodriguez. Um, because he does use 3D and photo bashing, obviously, but uh, his work ten tends to look kind of painterly in the sense that it looks kind of John Park and Derek Zabrowski ish. Not always, because sometimes Timothy's work becomes a bit too 3D. But uh, sometimes you can see some mixer brush and stuff like that use. And uh, yeah, so nice. More Noah's Ark stuff, uh, construction, I guess, happening. And again, look at how it's so vague, but it's about the big picture, right? Big picture. Ooh, nice, um, almost like a keyframe, right? Oh, very, very cool. Some blues and greens, some blues. Oh. Almost like a watercolor painting. Look at how it feels like a wash. Like it's a wet on wet kind of watercolor painting, right? Whoa. <laughs> nice keyframe shot. Right? But again, it's not super detailed. Um, the fabrics here, or the flags, help with the composition. Um, nice shadow here. Oh, the helmet design is amazing. Right? This guy is just essentially a silhouette. Very, very artsy. Um, very dramatic. Some reds and guess what? Some greens. Very rough looking dude. Nice minigun or Gatling gun here. Oh. Nice ship design. Reminds me a bit of um oh yeah, another artist that's similar to a uh, Craig Mullins is Jay Chael Park. They have the same kind of style. Or yeah. Nice concept, vehicle concept, right? Silhouette. <gasps> oh, okay, show this. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's not like super erotic, but uh, nice lighting. Look at how it's so painterly. Oh, he did use some mixer brush here. Some mixer brush, excuse me. Um, I don't see like a lot of round brush use. Um, it's very soft, very, very natural looking. Mixer brush here, again. Nice mech design. 
Oh, it reminds me a bit of Simic's design. Uh, his mech designs kind of look like this, very kind of... Um... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, damn! Look at how this entire area is just kind of vague. Kind of mixed in, all together. I'm um, not very clear in terms of the edge. Um, so essentially, he just focused on the, the parts in light, right? Nice samurai dude. Damn! Look at how it's so varied. Lots and lots of variety. Layer after layer, it just feels full. Lots of texture, not just a round brush here. You can see he did use a different brush. Um, ah, damn, right? Nice scene, museum. Now this one takes some time because you have to like be more deliberate with the edges of like the columns, right? Um, now this one is a bit more impressionistic, but he did have to uh, suggest some clear edges just to kind of make it, you know, seem like an actual um, scene where there are like hard edges, right? Oh, Halo stuff. Oh, nice graphic shot. Um, it's a bit weird. I would usually expect some kind of longitudinal kind of painting, but in this case, it's a very long portrait longitudinal. <laughs> it runs vertically, essentially, so. It's kind of like an interesting shot, but still it does have that compositional spacing that makes it look interesting, right? And look at how there are many hues here. Lots of yellows, greens, blues, blues, purples, right? Very, very full kind of painting. Even though it's not fully rendered, it looks full just because it has like a variety, a variety of hues, right? Um, damn, what's up, lady? Um, Oh, not a lot of round brush hues, very, very rough painterly strokes here, but it still has that impressionistic kind of feel. I'm looking at the arc in her back. Damn, how the butt is kind of sticking out. I do think she has a gun in her hand. I feel like she's, um, or she just killed this guy or something, right? It feels that way. It feels that way, right? Uh, this one's a dude riding a horse with a gun, so that's pretty interesting. Very interesting shot, we're seeing it from above, and the perspective is kind of very intense here. That's nice. She has an interesting hat, kind of like a Mickey Mouse kind of hat. Same character, right? Oh. And for this one, you can actually hardly see anything. <laughs> Not very sharp edge. I mean, you can tell this guy and this chick, but I'm not sure what happened to her back. I believe she's nude. You can see the butt here, right? But there's something wrong with her back. Is she like dead? Hard to say. Oh, uh, this was a bit more clear, right? The edges are sharper. Um, Is this for Halo or something? Nice creature design here. Nice nude. Oh, look at that. Super impressionistic, bro. Um, it's really m my thing. Um, it kind of turns me on, like visually. Um, fuck. And again, reds and guess what? Greens. Oh, this one's mostly blue. Um, it's some kind of environment design, I'm guessing. Right? Ooh. <gasps> Sorry. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is actually one of his um memorable pieces. Pieces of his. Uh, just because it looks so epic. Um, even the way he did like the water, the waves. Damn. And the armor design here, the highlights, the way the shadow. Um, the cast shadow happens or is done in the face. Like, you can really see the structure of his face. Um, lots of emotion here, very dramatic scene. Emotional scene. Nice quick environment concept. A gunslinger guy, western. Pew pew! Um, some kind of court scene. 
Harry Potter? Not sure. And uh, lecture, perhaps. Oh, one of my favorite sketches. Look at how simple it is, right? You can see like uh, the round brush use, um, and it's actually bigger than normal. So it's a really rough concept, but yeah, it's awesome, right? Um, there's enough clarity in it to kind of make sense. It's a vehicle, right? But it has that ambiguity in it that kind of makes you fill in the gaps yourself. Another western scene, lots of red, makes sense. Ooh, I find it interesting how people can do these lighting spots here. Like, how did he do that, right? Where there's kind of like cloudy, like a heavy rain cloud setting above. And like, how did he make these sorts of lighting here, right? Fuck. Photo bashed. Ugh. Uh, so this one's more of a production art thing, um, but yeah. Oh, I love the shot. Look at how he did the helmet here. Oh, again, it's not super. I mean, it's going to be a bit more defined, I guess, but it's not like super detailed in any way. But it looks amazing. Look at the shadow being casted on this gun, right? Oh, look at the helmet highlights here. Oh my god. Even this guy has a bit of emotion in it, just because of the lighting and the pose of the head. Uh, he's getting ready to shoot something, perhaps. Uh, look at how the environment is reflected on the helmet, right? Um, I would recommend you check out the the me the the Jaeger mech designs of John Wallen Liberto because he does the same thing with like the helmet shield or helmet kind of um um glass thing, <laughs> right? And again, you can see a lot of this. Guess what? Brush strokes, very very awesome. But obviously it becomes less or it becomes more refined in this area just because it's like the area of focus so very very impressionistic red blue a nice mermaid oh look at the sensualness oh damn Ooh la la oh this was a bit more refined reminds me of it's more production art um yeah, it's a bit refined. Nice back. Right? Oh! The color palette in, the, in this one is um, not very typical. I feel. She is some kind of gladiator. Um, you can see a bit of this kind of dragon thing. A wraith? A ring wraith? Fantasy, obviously. Um, Sci-fi. Ah, oh, look at the emotion. He's so sad, tired. Gosh, I have a lot of like <laughs> um artworks of his. Oh, I think this is a, a keyframe shot from the Kill Bill, right? I'm guessing. Maybe not, um, but look at the brush strokes again. Look at the brush strokes. Very, very confident. Oh, some rake brush here. Um, very, very heavy on the shapes. Not super, not super, not super <laughs> soft. Excuse me. Um, yeah. Very gouache like approach. Um, shape heavy. Shape heavy. Jesus. Now, this one's way more impressionistic. It's a bit rough, right? Rough. A bit refined. Nice shot, very, very dynamic. It's a bit like tilted. Nice quick environment concept here. Um, this is more of an architectural kind of a scene <laughs> or illustration or concept. Um, guy with a sword. Another vehicle design, damn. Oh, samurai. Nice long shot. Um, oh, this trick reminds me of shit. What's the guy's name? Frank Rosetta, right? Like the portions of the face and the figure. She's kind of thick. I believe Frank Rosetta likes her, you know, the women. 
um, thick. Um, another Western guy. Another sci-fi racing pod thing. Nice design. Yeah, this was more of a production shot. Um, right? For a film, cinematic shot. Oh shit, look at this. It's so simple, right? A bit of texture in the bottom, in the stable, but... Round brush, round brush, round brush, round brush. Ah. Now this one looks more like a classical kind of painting. Look at the softness, right? A lot of classical paintings do have that soft look to it. Like almost like um like it's slightly blurred. Um Oh this one is um uh, for the alien thing. The engineer's ship. Right. Oh the best. Ah it reminds me of Fuck, I can't remember. Frank Kong. Frank Kong has the same, or has a similar kind of a photo bash painting style, right? Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm guessing. Uh, wow, epic monster. Whoa. Almost like um, a screensaver kind of wallpaper, right? For a game. Damn. So I'm not sure what's happening here. Is she some kind of spirit coming off of her? Or is she like dragging this other person down? Very, very interesting shot. Nice butt. Ah, oh, look at that. This redhead is amazing. So she's kind of the leader, I guess. Ah, oh, this entire scene looks so intense. Obviously a war scene. This guy is dead. Um, right? It's some kind of battle, obviously. Oh, this chick is jumping off. Like Sinbad, right? Oh, look at the highlights on this guy. Oh, it's a knight. Um, and you can see like the... The blossoming environment reflecting on the armor, right? Sci-fi. Oh, look at her. She is uh, some kind of leader, I guess. Uh, maybe this is the lead warrior, commander. So the Stobin kind of future, right? Uh, you can see the Golden Gate Bridge here. Um, again, another warrior chick, babe. Oh, a bit of brush variety here. And hey, look at the composition. How, like how the sky the warriors and it's kind of foreground is spaced out. Even the shadow right here has its own kind of level of um, spacing. Oh, this one looks rougher. Rough, rough. When does it end? I have so many photos or images or paintings. Because I think you pretty much have or got the gist of this guy, right? Ooh. I believe this is an interior shot of the, the ship, Noah's Ark, right? Some designs. Reminds me of uh, The Mandalorian, right? The underground scene where the Mandos or the Mandalorian folks kind of just talked and shit and chilled. Nice mech design. This one's more refined. Not super refined, it's, a bit, it's still very impressionistic, but. It almost it's almost like a Tron kind of landscape environment. Rapunzel reminds me of um, the Avengers, <laughs> right? Nice moody environment here. Um, feels very dystopian-ish. Same. Uh, this was more of a it's very refined and finished, right? Oh, look at that hand. Look at those knuckles. So manly. You know, I don't really have manly hands. Like, I have very soft. Well, not soft, but very small. Feminine hands. And, uh... Kinky. <laughs> oh, the guy's reading a book. Oh, this is actually a black and white painting. Concept. The design of this vehicle um, has a bit of a Sid Mead-ish feel to it. 
Whoa, nice creature design. Or is it some kind of bio bionic kind of mech? Biological mech? Hard to say, but damn, look at the lighting. It's not super intense, not super sharp, not super contrasted. But it has that eerie kind of feel to it, right? When does it end? <laughs> nice. Oh, look at the back of this chick. Damn, she's working out. Um, very, very aggressive and very powerful way of painting, right? This one's more of a production shot. Um, doesn't have to be super refined, but um, it's enough. Ah, look at that! So red. You can see some plant life here, and you can actually see a faint touch of green, the hue. Even though the environment is mostly kind of warm and red, you can still see that uh, green part here. It's not super um, saturated, but uh, and not super light, but it's there. It helps to kind of tie the the redness of it down, so it doesn't become so kind of bright. You can even see some blues here to kind of help tone down the saturation because the saturation in the reds is pretty strong and the yellows is pretty strong so yeah nice chick same awesome chick very very heavy did a good kind so oh look at that feet though damn even though it's just a silhouette it looks very very sensual right um and she's pretty thick Oh, this one does feel like a classical painting, right? It's so typical. Oh, so jacked, bro. Um, he'd be working out. Um, gladiator, warrior kind of guy. Oh, uh, and we're done. Oh, thank God we're done. Um, so that's it for, that's my collection of Craig Mullen's work. I do recommend you check out his sketches more, just because you can see more of his brush strokes and because the more something becomes kind of finished looking, it's kind of hard to see his approach, even if you don't see him paint, just the way just seeing his sketches, I think will help you more. Um, even with this kind of sketch, you can you can see his directedness or his direct his direct kind of painting, where he's not very wishy washy. He's a very bold kind of guy, but he can find things if he has to, and that does appeal to me. So I do recommend you check out his work. He does have an Instagram, he doesn't post a lot, he does have an art station as well, but not a lot of pieces on his pro uh, profile there. So I still recommend you uh, check out his um, website, goodbrush.com. And I will link a couple of his interviews in the uh, description below. He has like a couple of videos um, with Bobby Chu, um, and I believe he has a couple of classes in schoolism. A school by, it's a school by uh, Bobby Chu as well. Um, so I do recommend you check his course there on schoolism. Um, so yeah, keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.